If you've been watching Bullet Heaven HD for a few years now, you've likely heard of Orange Juice, a dojin outfit from Japan responsible for shooting games such as Acceleration of Siguri X and Flying Red Barrel. We took a look at those games all the way back in episodes 57 and 71 respectively, and rather enjoyed the kind of shooting action that Orange Juice was able to bring. QP Shooting Dangerous is a vertical shooting game that actually follows the footsteps of Orange Juice's Flying Red Barrel in a lot of ways. But it also brings a lot of new mechanics and features to the table as well, which separates it from Orange Juice's previous efforts. How does this quest to solve the mystery of disappearing pudding fare? Let's take a closer look! Players start off by selecting the difficulty of the game along with one of three different playstyles, Orthodox, Aggressive, and Defensive. Depending on the mode chosen, the overall firepower and hyper break mode endurance will change, allowing for an extra layer of strategy in addition to the player's loadout. More on that soon. Being a vertical shooter presented in Tate style, QP Shooting Dangerous is a game that is more or less standard in a lot of respects. 8-way movement gets QP to where you want her to go with the typical ease you'd expect. Tapping a button for rapid fire and holding it for a more concentrated version will also slow QP down in the same way you'd see in any cave game. When concentrated fire is engaged, QP's hitbox is also shown. Two more inputs exist. The first one switches up the formation of your options, known as Arbits. As you defeat more and more enemies, more Arbits will join the fray and increase your firepower. Pressing the formation button will cycle through the three formations selected before playing. Depending on the formation, more or less firepower will be concentrated in different areas. Beyond the starting three formations, many more can be unlocked with R points, obtained through normal play. This makes for a very wide variety of fire patterns that an equally wide variety of players can choose from to get the most offensive power out of. If QP loses a life though, your acquired R bits will end up being lost and will need to be reobtained. The second additional input is the activation of Hyper Mode. Hyper Mode varies depending on the playstyle chosen, but in all cases, the base firepower of both QP and her R bits are greatly enhanced and shots surrounding QP are instantly converted to stars. The Hyper Mode can be activated when the gauge in the upper right hand corner fills by collecting stars. These stars are dropped through enemy destruction and bullet cancels, and the gauge can be filled all the way up to 150%, allowing for a significantly longer hyper to be used. If QP gets hit though, the hyper is cancelled and your gauge will be empty. This can also be used as a defensive measure to prevent losing a life. The challenge factor in QP shooting dangerous isn't especially high on easy or normal, particularly for veterans of the genre, so the game is also very approachable for novices as a result. The higher difficulties are definitely a lot more aggressive though, so a decent challenge can still be had, even with the fairly easy bullet cancelling gameplay. Basically, as long as you can kill off the enemy that shot them, any bullet can be cancelled to contribute to your hyper gauge. But, with no continues in arcade mode, there's still a requirement for skill and finesse to be used throughout the game. With five stages, QP Shooting Dangerous could be described as short, but not only is each stage actually a decent length, an extra conquest mode is also available to play right from the outset. Conquest plays very similarly to the normal arcade mode, but players can save their progress between stages to take on the game from any stage with save score, arbits, and lives if they fail further down the line. The controls are also slightly different, with concentrated fire needing to be engaged with the R bumper rather than just holding the fire button. Conquest mode was definitely made with novices in mind. QP Shooting Dangerous is pretty tame in its gameplay on the whole and ends up being a fairly non-offensive shooter. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the gameplay here, other than what feels like a slightly off-center hitbox. Thankfully, the scoring in arcade mode ups the ante and ends up being pretty fun. In QP Shooting Dangerous, enemy destruction and bullet cancellation is the name of the game. The more you can kill and cancel, the better your score, which is boosted by a multiplier in the top right hand corner of the screen. So long as the resulting stars are being absorbed into QP, the multiplier will go up, and it can end up getting into the thousands fairly easily. An arrow also indicates how much time is left in the current combo. Collecting the stars left behind from enemies and their cancelled shots makes the player's score rise dramatically. In addition to normal kills and bullet cancels, hyper mode kills will greatly increase the number of points a player can collect. Careful timing of hyper use throughout any given stage will allow a player's score to jump by huge amounts, especially if a boss or a mini boss and their shots are taken out in a hyper break finish. With a fairly easy extend score, it's not out of the realm of possibility for even novice players to score upwards of 4 extends throughout the game, especially with tactical hypers thrown in at critical times. There's more though. A stage tally at the end of each stage that displays the total star count and multiplier adds a decent bonus to your overall total. Obtained R points are also displayed here. Steam leaderboards enhance the scoring system, allowing players to see how they stack up to one another, adding to the replay value of the game. Of course, the higher the difficulty, the more players will score, since the screen can often get flooded by bullets.
QP Shooting Dangerous is a game that has a pretty absurd plot. A dog girl obsessed with pudding wakes up one day to find out that the world is devoid of her favorite treat, along with any memories of its existence. Naturally, that's enough to destroy the world figuring out why. Ridiculous plot notwithstanding, much like the gameplay, the presentation on the whole here isn't offensive, but it's also not especially noteworthy either. Take the visuals for example. Just like Flying Red Barrel, all of the enemies are 2D sprites made from 3D cel-shaded models. They're on the simple side as a result, but they still work fairly well. QP and her adversaries are also well designed with the kind of saccharine cute cues you'd expect from a game featuring a 14-year-old schoolgirl with a tail and dog ears trying desperately to get herself some pudding with the help of an armada of fluffy bunnies. The backgrounds are fairly dull though, despite being represented with 3D polygons and a slightly tilted perspective, they end up coming off as simple and repetitive, even if they are often bright and colorful. There are also a couple of image scenes around the logos in the corners that seem to appear when the game is displayed on a high resolution screen. They can be a tiny bit of an eyesore at times, but otherwise don't get in the way. The sound too has its ups and downs. Thankfully though, it's mostly ups. Effects wise, there isn't really anything that's out of place, especially for a cute em up style shooting game and once again, isn't especially offensive at any turn. Same goes for the music, though a few selections made the stages feel less action packed. Stage 2 in particular is a great composition, but it's a bit on the slow, RPG-ish side. Thankfully, most of the other themes work very well for what they are used for. With the Steam version in particular, Steam achievements are available for players to challenge themselves in addition to QP Shooting Dangerous's built-in challenges. Replay saves, additional unlockable Arbit formations, and other extras are also available for players that really want to sink their teeth into the game. So, all in all, QP Shooting Dangerous works fairly well for us, especially as a game to play between larger, more technical releases. But how does it stack up? Let's take a look. Controls in QP Shooting Dangerous are solid on the whole. The hitbox does feel a little off when navigating the more dense bullet patterns. Really easy on the one side, ridiculous on the other, there's a game mode here for everyone. Plenty of choice in game style and arbit formations allow players to take the game on in many different ways. Five stages seem short, but each is quite a decent length. Conquest mode and Steam leaderboards add replay. The 2D sprites work very well for the game's theme. But the backgrounds are pretty boring. Sound effects and most of the OST are spot on. However, some selections make the game feel a bit too slow. The multiple game styles and multitude of arbit formations sure do make for a flexible game. It may have been done with many other games in the past, but the combination of formations, playstyles, and bullet cancelling gameplay works very well. Definitely a worthy successor to Flying Red Barrel. Orange Juice comes through again with a largely fun, cute take on vertical shooting like Flying Red Barrel before it. If you have a PC of any kind, this is a game that should fill any shooting void you might have. QP Shooting Dangerous gets a 4.25 out of 5. Another great thing about QP Shooting Dangerous is its price. You can get QP Shooting Dangerous on Steam and other direct download sites such as Desura today for about 8 US dollars. <laughs> 